Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is a 1999 Mazda Miata behind me and it's got a bad catalytic converter, a bad pre-catalytic converter. There are two cats on this car. So the first one is actually bad. And I'm gonna show you how to test it and change it. So let's get started. So the OBD2 port on this car is actually under this panel, this fuse box panel. And it's actually right here. So we'll just connect our reader up to that. OBD2 interface thing that I have here. This I get for, uh, for you can get one of these for 10 bucks on eBay. This is a, a USB version. It's an ELM 327 scanner. It's just generic. These things come from China. Beware, some sellers sell you junk and they don't work. It's just how it is, but really inexpensive uh, option to be able to have a code reader. What's more expensive is actually the software that you use on a PC in order to use this particular adapter. This is ScanMaster ELM. You can get it for about 60 bucks. You have to pay for it if you want to use the graphing features in it. I'm not particularly recommending them over anyone else. This is just the one I happen to have bought when I bought it and this is what I've been using and it kind of works for me. I do recommend that you go ahead and get the Wi-Fi version of this ELM 327 adapter if you're going to get one because then you can just use an app like uh, this is called OBD Fusion, and this is actually only 10 bucks for iPhone. So I think it's even cheaper for Android. And that's like a cheaper solution if you want to be able to get graphing and look at fuel trims and, and of course, read codes and such. So anyway, I've got it connected, and I'm going to go over here to Trouble Codes. I'm just going to read. You can see we've got three codes. Uh, what I'm concentrating on is the P421. That's warm-up catalyst efficiency below threshold. So... What that's actually detecting is that the catalytic converter is not working uh, quite correctly. Now, the way I'm going to test that is I want to go ahead and look at live data. I'm going to be looking at this while the car is running, and I'm going to look at short-term fuel trim, long-term fuel trim, and I'm also going to look at the O2 sensor outputs. So let's uh, go ahead and start the car. We'll get it warmed up. I want the cats to kind of be warmed up while I do this. So I've got the engine started. I'll go ahead and click read here. Now, uh, first things first, the reason I, I brought up short-term and long-term fuel trims is I want to see if there are any problems with them, namely in the percentages. If you see high percentages in shorter long-term fuel trim, if you see any kind of positive percentages that are more than, let's say, 5 to 7%, that can indicate that you, you definitely have a problem with fuel trims. You've got a problem with your mixture. The engine is detecting that you've got a lean condition and it's correcting for that by adding more fuel. Uh, but as you see in this particular case, our fuel trims are looking fine. There's no, there are no otherwise uh, any, there are not anywise any problems with the fuel trims on this car, which means that we can just go ahead and believe what our oxygen sensors are telling us in this particular case. Now this oxygen sensor comes before the catalytic converter. It is supposed to be oscillating up and down like this. The second sensor, the, the sensor number two, that comes after our catalytic converters. That is not supposed to be going up and down like that. That is supposed to be straight across, a straight line, a little bit rich, maybe around 0.6 volts. So the fact that we see both O2 sensors behaving similarly like this, that is sign number one that our, our pre-catalytic converter is dead. Now, I'm going to show you another test you can actually do in order to confirm this for sure. But we got to move to the engine compartment. There's one more test that we want to do on this to just confirm for sure that this catalytic converter is bad. You can see it's kind of gone lean there for a little bit. It's kind of interesting. Uh, so the, the last test, which is optional, is we're going to do a, an oxygen storage test or a propane enrichment test is, is what it's also called. This is a test where I'm going to add propane to the intake while I'm running the engine at speed and then I'm going to shut off the propane and we're going to see how long it takes for the, the, the number two oxygen sensor to go from rich to lean again. If it drops to lean immediately after the pre-O2 sensor does, then that is a sign that your cat's totally dead. If it actually hangs on and continues to stay rich before it goes lean for a second or two, that's a sign that, this, that the catalytic converter is actually still good. This tool is a, a propane tank from a, a camping stove, and I've removed the Schrader valve from the end of it. Only reason I'm using this is because 
my regular propane tip for my, uh, you know, like the blue propane bottles you would use for heating things up. It doesn't actually put out enough propane for this test. So if you're gonna use that, make sure you have a wide tip and not one of those needle tips. But to do this, all we're gonna do is just unplug or unhook the uh, air box here. And I'm gonna put this in right here. Now I'm gonna get you guys focused on the screen. What I'm gonna do is open up the propane. I'm gonna uh, raise the engine speed on the throttle body manually. And uh, I'm just gonna add propane. I'll tell you when I'm adding it and I'll tell you when I'm taking it away. Okay, you can see right there. I want you guys to watch the number two oxygen sensor. I'm going to speed the engine up and then add propane. And you can see that we're going rich. We've gone rich on both O2 sensors. I'm adding the propane. I'm gonna turn the propane off. So you saw right there where the propane turned off. Right here, this was the event. You can see that basically they both dropped right about at the same point. You can see there was maybe a millisecond of extra uh, uh, you know where it took for this to actually drop but basically I would have expected this to extend for one or two more seconds before it dropped down on the number two oxygen sensor so there you go that that is a propane enrichment test and uh, that kind of confirms that this cat is bad so I'm going to show you how to change it um, what we need to do is actually take off the exhaust manifold in order to get at the catalytic converter that's right underneath it to do that, to make it a little easier, I'm gonna take the air box out of the way and take the, the big air tube out of the way as well. I don't think you absolutely have to. You could kind of work around it. There's enough room to work around it, but it's real easy to do. I'm just gonna unclip it here. I'm going to unplug these sensors. Actually, I wonder if I even really need to. Yeah, it's just because it's stuck into the bottom here. So I'll unplug these. Uh, they're they're zip tied to the sides here. I could replace the zip ties actually. Eh, might as well do that. There's one on this side. A little one back here, which is not a zip tie thing. Pinch it, pull it off. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way like this. And I think I will also take this off as well. Twelves actually. There we go. Now, I, I mostly did that for you guys, just camera angles. I'm changing my mind. I do kind of want this out of here. Hit that, a little silicone spray. Break the hose free. Pop that off. So we're gonna get this heat shield off of here first. It's just got a bunch of tens. I think there is one more down below, down here. And it's nice that they made a little cutout in, in the side of this right here. That's nice of them. It looks like there's an EGR tube on the back of the manifold back here that we're gonna need to get off. I'm gonna hit that with some penetrating fluid um, there are a total of nine bolts holding the manifold to the head. So I'm gonna try to spray the ones I can get to. I don't think it's gonna be necessary because California car, but why not? This is gonna burn off later when we start the car back up, by the way, just be aware if you do that. You're gonna to need to get these bottom bolts off. You can see they're facing downward, which is stupid, you know. Um, I'm comparing this with a Kia Sportage that has the same layout of engine and everything that I've 
previously done. That one's, you know, a lot easier to kind of get to. You can get to the bolts through the, the manifold. They've made spaces for them. So it looks like with this situation, we're going to have to take the manifold and the catalytic converter out as a unit. And uh, to do that, we're going to have to get the bottom bolts off. I went down there and took a look. Those ones you got to get off from underneath. And the, the whole subframe that's holding the car up is really in the way. I think I want to start with this EGR bolt back here. I just want to see if I can get it loose, if I can just crack it free. It's a 22 millimeter. Yeah, I got it. I got it to move. So, okay, that's all I really wanted to know. I wanted to make sure I can get that thing moving. That way we wouldn't have any problems later. So now that I can get that moving, I know I'm gonna get this thing out of here. So we're gonna move below and we'll get the three lower bolts off for the catalytic converter. It's gonna be really tricky to actually film this because this subframe here is just basically hiding it. You can see this one bolt right here and I'm gonna to have to get that by using this swivel socket. You can see how I'm coming at an angle here because of this. I can't get straight on it. So I'll be able to use this to get at that bolt. And then I'm gonna have to like snake around the manifold or the subframe in order to get the others. So of course that doesn't have enough torque to do anything. Um, I don't know if you guys would be ending up doing it this way if you had to, uh, if you were in like a really rusty state or something, I, you know, you might not have a lot of luck doing it this way. And you might actually have to take the downpipe that it's connected to, which runs uh, halfway into the car. You might have to take that apart from the, the second catalytic converter um, and get that out of there. There's also a bracket, which is like up right here that, uh, that bolts this into the side of the engine, holds it to the side of the engine so it doesn't move. Um, you should be able to get that bolt from above, I think. Just wondering if a short extension will give me any more reach. I think it will. Here, let's try this. There we go. Okay, so that one is cracked. And this back one, I don't know if I can get straight on it. Here. Maybe if we did a really long extension, we could actually kind of get in there from way back here. Okay guys, this is my nine inch extension plus my three inch extension, which makes for a total of 12. And that is just able to get on it, so. And there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off right now, all the way. I'm wondering if, oh, uh, you know what? I think the stud is actually coming out of the cap. Is I think what's happening, unfortunately. But that's okay. It's really difficult to get this particular one off. Well, let me see what's going on with our other two bolts. I want to see if those studs are trying to come out along with the bolts or what. Okay, this one is just the nut coming off. Okay, so there's one. Let's see what we can do with this bottom one here. All right, so those two can be gotten out with a ratchet. Just fine. So now let's go back to the most, to the hardest one, which is gonna be that uh, top one because the stud came out. Now it's okay that the stud came out because we're gonna need to get it out of the catalytic converter anyway to switch it over to the new converter because they never give you studs when you buy these new catalytic, replacement catalytic converters, they suck. but this is difficult for removing uh, the stud from this thing because it is uh, it's proven to be real difficult. Whew. Okay, I think the nut actually broke free finally. 
Either that or it broke the stud off, which I think, yeah, it broke the stud off. <laughs> broke the tip of the stud off. So I'm going to need to replace that bolt for sure, replace that stud for sure, but at least it came off. So cool, we'll be able to get the cat off and you know, we'll deal with fixing those problems. Studs can be had, new nuts can be had. It's not a big deal. Okay guys, looking from above, I want you to look down here and you see that bolt right down there. I'm not sure if we can focus, but that one down there, there we go. That's the one that is clamping that lower down pipe to the side of the engine. So from up above here, if you wanna to try to get that bolt out, you could then maybe try to get that whole down pipe to come out with everything if you don't wanna do what I just did. So that is uh, one thing to do. And then you would just have to remove two bolts from the rear catalytic converter. And those are much easier to access actually. But I did it this way. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the way we're gonna keep doing it. And then let's just soak these down extra good with penetrating fluid, just cause uh, this, they were harder than I thought they would be to actually get out about there. Yeah, I don't really care if there's excess fluid on there. I don't really care if it has to burn off when I turn this thing back on. Don't care, just wanna make this easy. Let's just get this, get this EGR tube unscrewed. I mean, I did crack it free, but it's probably gonna be easier still. I mean, it feels like I could get it with my hand. I can sort of get it, but not exactly. This might be in here in such a way, by the way, that uh, I will need to disconnect that EGR pipe from the other side, from the valve, wherever it goes to. Because uh, it might be sticking into the manifold and we might not be able to pull the manifold back. So I just want to find out where it goes. It goes back here. So it should be really easy. Actually really, really easy to do that <coughs> if we need to do that. And I probably should actually. Uh, it would make it a lot easier to unscrew it right now. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll do that. Let's just switch over to the other side. So you can see right there, it's, it's right here. That's where it goes into the side of the engine, or the side of the intake, um, I should say. So those are just two tens, I believe. Yeah. Super basic, let me just crack both of them free. So now I can just spin them out. Let's not drop them in there. One and two. So now that EGR pipe can kind of come free right there, now it's just dangling in the back. We'll be able to just pull it, pull it out and just get it out of there really easily. In fact, I would suggest starting with this first. It'll make the, the rear, the other side, so much easier to get off. Okay, so now, yeah. See, now I can just do that. That would have been way easier. Okay, that's a little tight. I, I never know when that, the, you know, how strong the ratchet mechanism on this is and I don't want to break it. See, that was, that was on there pretty tight. trying my hardest not to drop any of these nuts because I'm just afraid they're gonna get lost on top of that subframe down below. So this, this front O2 sensor actually plugs in right here. Oh, 
dummy. So this one, of course, clips in, of course, as opposed to the other side clipping in, which would make more sense. So there we go. Looks like that just goes through. We'll get it free so we can take it out of the car. This should be free now to come back. Now the issue of course is, is this going to flex outward? And I'm betting that it's not going to because it's bolted to the side of the engine that because that downpipe is bolted to the side of the engine. So it might be that I'm taking that bolt out of there that bolt that I was talking about earlier. Um, that might be the way that we have to go with this. And why don't we just, uh, why don't we just try to do that? Cause we need, we need to have room to do that to get this off of here. Yeah, it's a 12. Okay. It was actually pretty easy to move. There should be room for a gear wrench. However, So I'm going to try to get that from underneath might go a little bit faster. This is probably the easiest way to go. There we go. Okay. So now we're out. Now we can move. Now we're good. I probably just came off of the, off of the head there. Okay, so now we can get this out of here. Should be able to. Pretty easy. So here you can see a better view of that bolt that I just took out, that, that clamp and everything. So this is the downpipe that I'm talking about that you would actually pull out with the uh, with, with everything and I'll show you what this is connected to in a second. You just I want you to note that you have to unplug this O2 sensor that actually is running up here alongside the head. All you got to do is just follow it alongside and it looks like it's connected right back here behind the engine. So you would just unplug it and if you want to get that downpipe out which actually extends all the way down to here and connects to the rear catalytic converter right here it would just be these two bolts and I should have done that originally to begin with. It would have actually, you know, it would have been just as easy to kind of slide this, this out of there. Um, so, you know, these would have been much, much simpler to get off. I probably wouldn't have broken that stud that I just broke. You know, it's, uh, so that, that's probably the way I would recommend that you do it. Since you do have to take that, that bracket bolt off, just go ahead and just take these two bolts off. You can get the whole thing out of there in one assembly and then take it apart on your bench.